to my brethren. I say a time for peace is at hand. A new dawn will... Oh, come on! So before we move on from the subject of themes and legacy, I'd like to take a moment to talk about someone without whom none of us would be sitting here. I mean, we'd probably all be alive, but we wouldn't be talking about a successor to Planescape Torment. I refer, of course, to David Zeb Cook, the designer of the original Planescape campaign setting uh, and the second edition Advanced Dungeons and Dragons system in general. Uh, Zeb's adventures and those of Jeff Grubb made me want to be a game designer. Uh, I spent countless hours poring over the Dungeon Master's Guide and the Player's Handbook so that I could build adventures for my friends. It was Zeb's creation of the Planescape campaign setting that truly made a difference in my life. Without Planescape, I would not have had the opportunity to stretch the creative muscles that took me to interplay, and without Planescape, I would not have had the opportunity to work on the first torment. So, Zeb, please accept my gratitude. Your work on the Planescape campaign setting was a work of genius, and I remain humbled by its scope and power. Thank you. Okay, well, anyway, now I guess we're going to talk about today's thing. Uh, now that Monty has laid the groundwork for us, let me tell you a little bit more about the setting and where we're placing ourselves in the Ninth World. Uh, Monty's main focus for developing the Ninth World is in the Steadfast and the Beyond, that is, the rough confederation of nine kingdoms united by their common faith, and the Beyond, which is the term used by the Steadfast to describe any place that isn't part of the Steadfast. So that means that Torment is set largely in the Beyond. We'll have some crossover with the Steadfast, of course. Uh, specifically, Monty will probably be doing an area within the Steadfast for his contribution to the game. Where we're going is... Well, I'm not going to nail down an exact location here. Let me just say this. You plummet to Earth in a verdant clave, in a small village, well outside of larger civilization. But this land isn't empty. No. In fact, it's surrounded by raiders who prey on both the local claves and the merchants, who ply the trade routes that pass nearby. Strange creatures dwell in the sky and in the ground, and the locals say you should avoid the lake because it's infested with strange insects whose bites can set your blood on fire, and they're not speaking figuratively. Now, if you want to stay here, you can. But you found a device called a mirror, a relic from a bygone era, like so much else in the Ninth World. Most people who use these mirrors discover that the, the devices are inert, or perhaps provide a simple scan of their health, maybe a minor healing. But the Changing God discovered that they respond to the tides. Uh, and for those more specially attuned to the tides, for instance, the Changing God, the mirrors allow mental transference into specially prepared vessels. But of all of those who use the mirrors, it seems that you are unique in your ability to cast your consciousness into the bodies of others and then come back to your own. This is where you'll start to get some serious answers about who and what you are, and the first revelation, you are not the only one of your kind. You're not the only cast off of the change of God. Each time you use one, you'll get to experience life through another character's eyes, usually someone who's critically important to your own search for answers. And the mirrors don't just allow you to step into someone else's shoes. While you're there, you can improve their lives, or destroy them or you can turn them to your advantage. The mirrors aren't limited to the Ninth World, either. They'll be your passageway to some of the most outlandish locations in Torment. Distant worlds, other dimensions, some might even let you travel forward or backward in time. This discovery will open up questions. Now, if you want to find answers, you'll have to travel. Specifically, you'll be traveling to the city of Sagas Cliff, on the eastern shore of the megacontinent that Earth has become. But where? Fortunately, you'll find a clue in a mirror. And since it looks like we hit that stretch goal, you crazy awesome people, I think we'll have Mr. Zeitz talk about the bloom and what you can expect to find there. First, though, let's have Adam tell you about choice, consequence, and the tides, because that's going to have a huge role in how you experience this game. It's time for someone else to talk now. Oh! And while I'm at it, since Kevin has given me some surprises, let me please just take a moment to say, I will have my revenge. Specifically, please join me in a vocal appreciation of all the hard work that Kevin has put into this project. 
He ordinarily likes to stay behind the scenes, but I will not have it. He's the driving force behind this project, and he should have his due. Thank you, Kevin. Oh, and in case we haven't said this enough, you all are seriously great. All of you. Thank you so much. We are really, really looking forward to exploring the story with you. Updated my... my diary.